So we've already seen how we can create a digital comparator using discrete logic, uh, and that is usually good enough for most applications. In fact, uh, if all you're needing to do is compare for equals greater than or less, then a discrete comparator is going to work just fine. Uh, however, I do want to show you a little bit of a trick, and the reason why is this trick will become incredibly useful down the road. And that trick is the ability to turn a subtractor circuit into a digital comparator. So how can a subtractor circuit create digital comparisons. I mean, obviously a digital comparator needs to check for equality, it needs to check for greater than conditions, less than conditions, and all a subtractor circuit can do is just subtract. Well, let's actually reason through this. We'll actually start with the equality thing and we'll work our way to the other ones first because the equals is actually fairly easy. So obviously the result of any digital subtractor circuit is going to be a minus b. So if I have a here and I have b here set to minus, the output is going to be uh, here. It's going to be equal to a minus b. So if a is equal to 8 and I subtract b, which is equal to 5, the output is going to be equal to 3. But what happens if a is equal to 9 and b is equal to 9? Well, they're equal to each other. Uh, but if I actually perform the subtraction, you'll notice that the result is 0. In fact, if a is equal to b, the result is always going to be 0. So testing for a 0 output on our uh, output is, uh, or on our subtractor circuit is going to tell us if a and b is equal to 0. But now we're back at square 1, because now all we're doing is, instead of comparing a to b, what we're doing is comparing uh, the output uh, to a constant 0 and checking for that. Uh, so if that's, you know, if we're comparing this output to zero, why not just compare A and B? Um, the reason why is because comparing to zero is actually a lot easier than comparing one number to another. So if I wanted to compare one number to another in order to verify that this number is in fact equal, I have to compare bit by bit across the board and ensure that all bits are equal. Uh, and that of course requires an exclusive NOR per set of bits. And the reason why is because any one of these bits can change and all of a sudden the number is no longer equal. Uh, so there's a lot of different conditions and uh, there's a lot of different combinations where a number is equal. There's a lot of number of combinations where a number is not equal. But when comparing to zero, there's only one instance where a number is equal to zero and that is when it's zero. Uh, so if I were to change any of these bits, say uh, if I were to change you know, this bit, uh, it's no longer equal to zero. If I were to change this bit, it's no longer equal to zero. If I were to change any number of bits, it's no longer equal to zero. So any and all change from zero means it's no longer equal to zero. So in other words, if a one is present anywhere, it's not zero. Well, if we were to do something like that, all we really need then is one logic gate. So if we have our four bit input coming in, we can actually just feed it into a NOR gate. And so with a NOR gate, so long as the input is all zeros, the output is going to be a 1. But as soon as one of these inputs changes to a 1, that OR now has a 1 on its output, that gets inverted, and the output is now a 0. And this logic gate is all we need to detect if a number is equal to 0. So simply by adding an, a, uh, a NOR gate to the output of our subtraction circuit, ignoring all of the bits together, uh, that can create for us an equal flag that we can use to, of course, detect if A is equal to B. So that's a very simple modification that allows a subtractor to compare for equality. Uh, but what about these other comparisons, greater than and less than? Uh, well, let's take a look at the less than first and see how we might do something like that. So with only subtraction at our disposal here, how exactly can we detect a less than condition? I mean, obviously, we've established that detecting equal condition is simple because anything minus itself is always going to be equal to zero. Uh, but that's not necessarily the case if a is less than b because of course if a is equal to 7 and b is equal to 9, well that's going to be equal to negative 2. Uh, and say a is equal to 5 and b is equal to 10, the result is going to be negative 5. If a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 18, well the result is going to be equal to negative 16. None of these numbers match, so there's nothing that we can actually check for 
to determine if A is less than B. And of course, if you were to look at the numbers themselves, yes, you are correct. You're never going to get a constant number when A is less than B. But what you are going to get that's constant is the fact that the number is negative. So if you can test to see if the result of A minus B is a negative number, uh, then you can determine that A is in fact less than B. So how do we actually detect a negative binary number? Uh, well, in order to figure that out, we'll have to look at some negative binary numbers. And uh, to create negative binary numbers, recall from the binary tutorials uh, that to create a negative binary number, you simply have to choose complement a positive binary number. So here I have some positive binary numbers. I have 5, 3, and 11. And we can choose complement them to get their negative equivalent. So the algorithm for choose complementing is simply to invert. So it's going to be 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. And then add 1. So that's going to be 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And that's going to be equal to negative 5. Likewise with the 3, invert. 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, and add 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. That's going to be negative 3. Likewise with 11, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, and add 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So that's going to be negative 11. So you'll notice that in all of these examples, the most significant bit is always going to be a 1. In fact, that is always true for any negative binary number. The most significant bit is going to be a 1. Uh, and as a result, any time you're working with two's complemented binary numbers, uh, your most significant bit is often referred to as the sign bit because it denotes the sign of the number. And the rule of thumb is that if it's a 1, your number is negative. If it's a 0, your number is positive. And so if you wanted to create a circuit that takes in a binary number and tells you if it's negative or not, uh, that's actually fairly easy to do. In fact, you don't even need any logic gates. All you have to do is just take the most significant bit and just tap it off. And so that extra bit that's sticking out there, that ends up being your sign signal. Uh, or it's also often referred to as a negative signal. And so simply by tapping off the most significant bit of our result bus here, just taking the, the topmost bit here, uh, we can actually use that to determine if the number is, is less than. And so using this circuit right here, we can now determine if A is equal to B or if A is less than B. So now the only condition left to check is the greater than condition. So pardon the redundancy, of course, I know we've gone over this already, but of course in using an A minus B method, if A is equal to B, uh, then the result is going to be 0. Uh, if A is less than B, uh, the result is going to be negative. So what does it look like when A is greater than B? Uh, well, let's use something like 9 minus 7. Um, that's obviously going to be equal to 2, which is a positive number, but it's also not 0. So you could actually detect for a positive number. You could take that topmost bit and just detect to see if it's a 0. And that'll tell you if it's a positive number. But the problem is that this also trips that, that condition because 0 is going to have a 0 in the most significant bit. Now you may think we have to do some confounded trickery with our circuitry to try and figure out the exact condition when a number is positive but not 0 and, and uh, do something like that. But you actually don't have to uh, because you'll notice that uh, a number is either going to be 0 or it's going to be negative. And if it's neither of these, it's very clearly going to be a positive. So we don't even actually have to create a circuit or anything of the sort to check for a positive integer. All we really have to do is just check to see that these two conditions are false. And we can do that by running them, of course, through a NOR gate. And so simply by tying a NOR gate to the output of our two other signals here, uh, this is going to be off anytime either one of these signals is on. And it's going to be on if both these signals are off. So of course, if the signal is equal, it's obviously not going to be less than. And it's very clearly not going to be greater than. So the greater than signal is going to be off. Uh, if the signal is less than, of course, it's not going to be equal. That's a given. But it's ob also obviously not going to be greater than. So that signal is off too. Uh, but if it's not equal and it's not less than, uh, then it's obviously going to have to be greater than. So this is going to be on by default. Uh, so no extra tinkering with the circuits is needed. All you just need to do is uh, just connect both these signals through a NOR gate 
to get the other signal. And with just this small little addition here, like I said, you can turn a subtractor circuit into a digital comparator very, very easily. Uh, and so you might think that this is you know nice to know, but you're probably never going to use this. I'm going to tell you this right now that come time to look at much more advanced combination circuits as well as computer architectures, you're going to find that using a subtractor circuit as a digital comparator actually has quite a few uses. So just keep it in mind going forward that there is a, there are other options for digital comparison.